sorry that today is the scheduled class so i'm continuing but you know this is generally i follow uh, typically like you know since we have fixed uh, classes which are away from the regular schedule so we just don't try and miss the classes until or unless there is a compelling reason right so 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 hopefully like you know you enjoy this class and then you enjoy after one and a half hour you enjoy you go back to your routine schedule okay so there was some confusion i believe in all of you that whether the class will happen or not so always the class will always happen okay as far as me is concerned class will always be there until or unless there is a compelling reason to really cancel the class i will not cancel the class okay so never have a confusion wednesday friday you know we are bound to have these classes 6 to 7 30 makes it much easier for me okay if it if at all it is to be rescheduled i will tell you apparently right great so let us start with our discussion so we were discussing about lot of nanoscopic system and i was showing you some examples <clears throat> so i continue with those examples so you have heard about like you know this metal nanoparticles uh, in the last class graphene sheets metal nanoparticles all these things you have heard about right uh, another very important uh, important area uh, which is which is emerging very fast is called you know this particular area you know we term this as a kind of this is called the nanobio okay this particular area is coming heavily you know this is this is this is one of the areas which is becoming very fast you know developing very fast what what do i mean by nanobio you can see most of the biological processes are biological process what is the hallmark of the biological process they are all the molecular processes right and what is the difference between molecular process to nano or to micro you know the the difference is that you know a molecular assembly okay leads to nano and a nano assembly leads to micro so one very simple example is that say suppose you have the dna structure you are attaching enzymes okay and then you know maybe you are also putting some magnetic nanoparticles here so in that process this entire object can be a kind of you can make this entire object a kind of delivery vehicle which is more biocompatible than only metal than only metal oxide something like that right so this type of systems are called the dna dna superbots so essentially you you are you are utilizing uh, some of the components of your body only uh, there are a lot of dead cells that are there so those dead cells can be accumulated and dna can be extracted from there and those dna molecules can be really uh, engineered in order to come up with the delivery vehicles say these delivery vehicles can you know clear blood clot in brains or cholesterol deposition where like you know in the heart blockage you know heart artery the blockage takes place the cholesterol deposition they can be removed so all these sort of things can be done in a very very you know uh, meticulous manner and at the at the level of high precision so mixing with the blood then putting it the right place okay so in a manner like you know you can really control the right now what is done you know you need to do a kind of invasive surgery to really take 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 the vessel out and then open it and then you know from there you have to create a bypass so a lot of complications are there so people are thinking that you know uh, at the early stage you know if it is detected whether this way one can really do this sort of things or not this is another very interesting example i am going to throw in front of you so you see that say this is a water droplet okay now if you put a volatile volatile material in front of water droplet it is just you know here somebody has you know thrown a little bit of diethyl ethyl ether vapor so you can see that you know this water droplet has some sort of motions in motion inside is a kind of water micro droplet and these black particles are just some black iron particles that has been put in 
so that you know you can really really follow there is a motion that is happening inside the droplet you know this particular thing will make a little bit more clear so in this micro pipette you have some alcohol okay or this is maybe dihydryl ether this also has a dihydryl ether vapor you know into this and this droplet is is having some iron particles inside so some i mean uh, this printer cartridge has been loaded so and then you know if you bring in this alcohol vapor so you can see that strong rotational currents are created so essentially what is happening say if you have a water droplet like this and then you know if you bring in some vapor so you know water has a surface tension of say about 72.5 millinewton per meter whereas all these alcohols and all they have a typically surface tension of about 30 so there is a gradient of surface tension that is created on the surface of the water which is causing this recirculatory motion right so this is a new phenomenon this is an absolutely new phenomenon how do you make use of it say you can really look at this particular this particular image say what you are doing you are putting this droplet on two electrodes which are made of copper okay so you have a copper electrode on this side you have a copper electrode on that side so now this is the magnified image of the droplet which is shown here which is shown here so this is this is the small droplet you can now imagine looking at this you know multimeter size and all you can imagine what is the what is the size of the droplet it is essentially a micro droplet which is sitting on two electrodes correct and this is a salt loaded uh, droplet and here if you bring in bring, bring in the vapor what happens it starts rotating and if you measure the resistance you will find that the resistance will go down as it rotates and it's very simple you can understand this very simply that why the resistance is going down because uh, these ions will start moving, right? So if you have a salt water droplet, you know, initially it is a stationary droplet, but moment it rotates, you know, it is basically increasing the ion mobility, right? Now, when you increase the ion mobility, ionic mobility, what happens when the droplet starts rotating, you may see there is a reduction in the resistance. Now, in that, if you put some nanoparticles, like say, suppose silver nanoparticle and gold nanoparticle, you may see this reduction in resistance will further be stabilized. So, as you are putting gold nanoparticle, as you are putting the silver nanoparticle, what is happening? You know, it is now having more conductivity, and that increase in the conductivity is actually causing more reduction in resistance. Now, question is that, so suppose if this is a microscopic phenomena, if this is a microfluidic phenomena, how do we make use of this? Right? So you see how exactly we are making use of it. So we take the droplet and we put a resistor, we put a power source here, we put a resistor here, and we put an LED here. Why we are putting the resistor here? Because, you know, when initially there is a power supply, because of this resistance, there is no power supply here. However, you know, you have two resistors. This, this is a salt water droplet. Everybody knows that salt water droplet is conducting, but not highly conducting. It is, it is, it is mildly conducting, right? It is not highly conducting. So when you have a power source and a resistor and a droplet, essentially there is no light to the LED. Whereas moment you put some uh, put some vapor what happens you know this starts rotating the conductivity increases the resistance reduces and then you know you can have a you can have a you can have the uh, power source running through it and you can turn on the LED so I just show you the example here first I show you this example that how it's about 0 0.134 you have in the normalized resistance here but now moment you are bringing in the 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 vapor you can see that it is reducing the resistance is reducing. That means the droplet is becoming more conducting. Now you see this one. I just show you uh, in the in the full screen mode. So you will be able to see this in a more comprehensive manner, even from your mobile phone. So just see it. See when see when I run this. So here, this is the LED. This is the water droplet. You will see the light will be turned off, and then the student is bringing in the alcohol vapor now you see that it is this this led is turned on when it is stationary the led is turned off when it is moving when it is rotating the led is turned off 
right? So I learning in the video. So you see that moment this uh, this vapor is brought in, you can see the LED is turned on. So one can really see that this can be a volatile organic sensor. POC sensor is one of the one of the very very uh, uh, very very uh, important sensors. More importantly, this can also be an alcohol sensor. So what we did, we went for lot of different, you know, we went for lot of different uh, volatile organic like diethyl, ether, toluene, chloroform, ethanol, methanol, and we could see that you can really map this, this delta R, the change in the resistance, you know, that is different with respect to what? This is proportional to the, the difference in the surface tension. So first is the surface tension of water and the surface tension of this volatile matter. This delta gamma has a correlation with this delta R. So essentially, you can not only not only identify each and individual vapor, but you can also, if you put up a mixture, you will be able to really follow those mixtures. So here you may see that you know somebody you know you you have put dry nitrogen, you have put ethanol with uh, nitrogen, you put diethyl ether with nitrogen. So you see that these are able to they are able to differentiate between these two, right? So it's a very interesting system, a simple droplet, you know, you can convert into a kind of alcohol sensor, right? So just study this thing. Now, as I'm talking about more biological systems today than the ones that we discussed last, last week about more materials based system, one of the most uh, uh, widely and most uh, um, uh, speedily, most fast, you know, the, the, the fastest increasing uh, area of research is the point of care testing. What is a point of care testing? It is like a kind of handheld device, like a glucometer, like a pregnancy kit, like a weighing machine, okay, like a pressure monitoring device, like a pulse oximeter. I think that is one has caught imagination of everybody during this, you know, pandemic. So essentially, you have got a very low cost, even mobile phone can be you know, no, thought about a kind of a point of care uh, device because, you know, it gives a lot of information about your health, like, you know, how many footsteps you have walked, what was your quality of sleep, you know, different app-based systems are, you know, AI and app-based systems are developed in the mobile phone. Correct? So, lots of different types of point of care testing devices, urine test strips, you know, glucometers, heart rate monitoring, pregnancy kit, HIV test kit, you know, these are all commercially available products, right? Now, in this, what WHO has specified that it has to be assured. One of the major issues of these devices, as you have already noticed, that you know they are they are they are they are rather not affordable in the beginning. Then their sensitivity is low, and uh, as compared to the high precision path labs, they are not that specific. Most of the time, they are not user friendly. You know, robustness has an issue. Okay, so it is not you know that easy user friendly. You know, it should. It is not equipment free. You always have to confirm with other uh, uh, other devices, right? And it has to be deliverable. So affordable, sensitive, specific, user friendly, robust, equipment free, and deliverable. So it has to be assured device, right? So this is what is specified by WHO. So one really, one really is, uh, you know, as you progress, as we progress in this particular series of lecture, you know, as I have given you many. Uh, uh, many, many, many term projects also. So there you will find like, you know, this is one area where the usage of nano micro, micro usage of microfluidics, usage of nanotechnology is very much rampant. Like say, suppose if you look at this glucometer, correct? The way this, this particular blood is called the capillary blood. The one that is taken from your hand, from this, you know, central part of your hand that is called the venous blood. And this is called the capillary blood. Why this is called the capillary blood? Because you are collecting them from the blood capillary. Not only that, the way it is getting into the device is also a capillary action. So with that, you know, you are testing the quality of serum, how much glucose you have, right? So again, microfluidics in action. Again, you will find nanotechnology in action. Say, suppose you have literal fluences, this, you know, rat rapid antigen kits or urinary pregnancy kit. Pregnancy kit heavily uses nanoparticles, gold nanoparticles for the change of color, right? So those sort of devices are already there and they are picking up as fast as possible, you know, because they have got a lot of utility in terms of, you know, the deep determination of the human health. 
one of the major uh, drawbacks of nanotechnology is it, it also comes with a lot of risk, right? So one also should be very much careful. We have to be very very careful about the 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 problems that are that are that are that are dreaming uh, 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 with the with with more and more usage of nanotechnology. Now, one may ask the question that you know, uh, is it the case that the problem was previously not there, right? So uh, the answer is that yes, this problem is existing since the since the existence of the civilization because you know most of the natural processes they use nanotechnology in a huge way only last 20 years human being has started utilizing it now moment human being has started utilizing it what is happening like you know you are slowly you are coming to know uh, the nanotechnological processes that are harmful uh, to your body like say suppose earlier you know when you had mosquito and all people used to you know burn the uh, uh, burn, burn this, you know, stubbles in order to really throw mosquitoes out. But slowly, you know, we are understanding that those actually lead to your uh, respiratory disorders because any type of smoke is nothing but volatile organics and they are going to deposit in your lung airways, which is going to cause problem in your brain, your lung airways, okay? And maybe you develop COPD and all because of this, you know, smoky atmosphere that, that is created to throw out the mosquitoes. Correct. So this stubble burning is a big example in that that happens every year in our capital in New Delhi. You know, it chokes the entire capital. So one can really see that nanoparticle ingestion, you know, getting into gastrointestinal systems, okay, uh, getting in the joints, right, circulatory system, lungs, inhalation, brain, heart, everywhere, you know, it's a disease map, different types of diseases that are happening because of this ingestion, because of this, you know, circulation, because of the deposition of these nanoparticles, okay, which one has to be also careful. It is not that it is happening now, but it is happening for ages. But right now it is understood that, oh, okay, this is, this is the reason why things are happening. So essentially these are the nanoscale systems. Like say, suppose you know that now coronavirus is 100 nanometer particle and it is creating a havoc in human bodies. Right. So previously, people did not know that virus molecules are nothing but you know 50 to 500 nanometer particles, and all viral infections are 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 nothing but you know the 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 blessings of nanotechnology in terms of like you know blessings or curse of nanotechnology to the to the human civilization. Right. So it is very very important that cleaning toxicity and responsibility associated with like say suppose you see coronavirus. Right. This experimental work, experimentation was going on in a Chinese lab. And from there, like, you know, they could not control the uh, the growth of the virus and that spread and it has created this havoc. So, so essentially when you are experimenting with this, you know, if you are not very careful, it may lead to health hazards uh, to the person who is doing the experiment. And at the same time, it may lead to problem for the entire civilization. So, you know, keeping the mind, keeping in the mind the, the level of toxicity, that can be there for this sort of things, you know, one must be very, very responsible in this regard. Now, the final part of this introductory lecture is I'm going to go to the scientific aspect of it. OK, can anybody tell me what is the color of gold? Anybody has any idea what is the color of gold? Can anybody tell me what is the color of gold? You are thinking that what type of question is this, right? So it's more towards occur. It's more yeah, towards occur. Occur. Yes, everything that glitters is gold, right? There is a kahawat. Correct? And it's all like, you know, it's yellow occur, right? Yellow is, you know, lemon yellow or you know, a, a gold, golden yellow, you can say, right? So typically, you know, this sort of colors generally you expect. Is it possible to change the color of the gold? Yes, sir. How come? Uh, by changing its dimension and size, uh, shape, sir. How? 
by synthesizing different uh, sizes or uh, shapes of nanoparticles sir very good so i am giving you an example this is also gold this is also gold this is also gold everything every color that is shown here are all gold okay now i come back to this figure a little later now i tell you the recipe so what is this anybody can tell me what is this has anybody seen something like this in their whole life so this is where? old uh, old chinese painting i think sir where do you see have you seen in your life physically have you seen this anywhere not physically sir in the internet movie and stuff ha huh? in on internet we have seen like internet but you have not seen by yourself sure i don't agree none of you have seen i think who is this who is this sir glass paint who's picture is this mary Uh, yes Mary. so would it be the virgin mary yes but where did you see this generally this type of uh, yeah uh, unfortunately i have seen it on the internet as well only but no you have not visited any churches in your whole life churches yeah i haven't visited any churches in my whole life sir so please visit right yeah okay sure <laughs> okay so uh, uh, you know these are called the stain glasses right and uh, generally churches are very famous for using the stained glasses to create this type of art artwork about jesus mary and all the stories are painted like this so that you know uh, looking at the paint painting and all you remember the story now can anybody tell me what is a stained glass is basically a colored glass right so say suppose you know when i am synthesizing glass how do i create color inside the glass how do i make the glass color any idea sir so, uh, we can adjust the, it so that it uh, reflect only certain color you can paint some color right yes sir so you take a glass and you can paint some color on the top of that am i correct but stained glasses are not done that way right so what stained glasses are done when you are uh, see this glass this is a these are glass slides right or glass sheets that are created so when you when you are creating the sheet initially what you do you melt the glass okay now when you melt melt the glass what you do you add auric chloride either silver chloride or gold chloride into it correct and while you solidify you also add sodium borohydride to reduce this you know au3 plus or ag2 plus okay to ag0 or au0 in situ correct so you have a liquid glass in that you have given a salt and that salt is converted to metal you know in situ and if you do a controlled condition reduction you may develop this nano prisms nano spheres okay so this is silver nano prism this is gold nano sphere this is gold nano sphere this is silver sphere okay this is so and these are the three silver spheres of three different sizes now if you just you know synthesize this under controlled condition you may generate red you know orange you know green yellow blue violet all different types of colors you can just create if you just change the shape and the size of the nanoparticle and this happens because of a quantum mechanical effect which is called the surface plasmon resonance okay any metal dielectric interface at any metal dielectric interface so you can imagine that this is glass and glass is embedded with with gold this gold nanoparticles are sitting inside this glass so it's a glass is a dielectric material in terms of electrical properties are concerned gold is a is a conducting material as far as electrical properties concerned now moment you put light on top of that what happens you know at the dielectric metal interface you generate surface plasmon resonance 
and that surface plasmon resonance leads to different types of colors so you can really at the nano scale as you reduce the size and shape of the particle what happens you can really create you can convert the glittering gold into a wine red color into a violet color into a yellow color into a green color into the color that you like right more importantly gold is a very very biocompatible material that's the reason why gold is used as an ornament you know if you have iron you will have issues with the skin and all but gold with gold and silver why they are used as ornament first you know they have a very glittering color second is you know they are very inert so they develop oxide at very late stages so 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 the decay of the metal is very less right and third is you know it's a biocompatible material like so suppose if you really want to attach nucleic acid antibody any drug you know they can very easily attach on gold surfaces it's a biocompatible material so these nanoparticles you know they can be very beautiful drug delivery vehicle at the same time they can really really interact with biomolecules and at the same time they can really give you color change so that's the reason why this type of nanoparticles are used in the pregnancy kit you know when you put the when you when the urine is not there it has a color so suppose it has a color like this now when the urine is put where the antibody is there where the antigen is there this antigen binds with this antibody and then there is a color change which tells that whether the person is pregnant or not right so this is the this this plasmonic properties of the nanoparticles that are used extensively in order to really in order to really uh, uh, really really come up with different types of technological devices and this is nothing but you know the height of chemical engineering this is nothing but the height of nanotechnology this is nothing but the height of you know fluid mechanics whatever you reaction engineering thermodynamics all subjects that you have read you will find that you know physics quantum mechanics all are coming into a single place and that's where you know that's i was discussing in the last class that this is this has a number one a multidisciplinary aspect in one asymptote and the interdisciplinary aspect on the other asymptote right is it is it is it interesting you have any questions here to ask if not let me just move to the next example how many of you are a tennis follower anybody who likes to follow tennis who is the world number 1 right now novak djokovic sir right so you follow tennis yes sir is he playing australian open yes he is how could he was not given he is not given visa no yeah but he is undergoing some training sessions over there in australia right so participation he, is there on hold yes because he has not been given visa right yeah hmm. so in a tennis match after how many how many games the balls are changed have you any any one of you have observed that the balls are changed at some point of time in a tennis match so it's probably after a set after a set yes no that is not the right answer any idea of anybody has any idea none of you are sports lover it appears no every six games you know you will find they will change the ball okay like say suppose first 3 3 4 2 5 you will see there is a change of ball not after the set because set can last for i think 2 hours for the ball yes sir uh, the ball ball will not survive that long question is why can anybody tell me what is, is there the in the ball, ball? what is there in sir, the ball what is sir, the in the tie break yeah sir, in the tie break is new ball when there is every six every six game every... there is a change in ball the tie break no tie break doesn't matter after every six games you will see the the server will show that he is using new ball old balls will be removed and new balls will be given every six games 
Is it clear? Okay, sir. You are talking about like you know during the tie break, right? The tie break is a one single game, correct? When it is six six, you play for a game for tie break, right? Yes, sir. So, so moment it is six six, you have already changed twice the ball. So when you start the tie break, you are already serving with a new ball, right? Yes, sir. In general, if not, that is treated as a full game, right? Correct. Now you tell me what is the material of construction of a tennis ball? What are the components that are there in a tennis ball? Any idea? Jaldi se batao. Common sense ka pooch rao. There is an inner Rabar. core. Yeah, please tell. Yeah. So rubber, rubber. Ha. So you have a butyl rubber. Right, which is the inner core, and then there is a soft, you know, fabric that is there outside. Right, this yellow is like you know, it's like a cotton soft fabric, and then you have an inner core, right, which is a butyl rubber. So generally, earlier people used to use only butyl rubber, but later this butyl rubber is filled with a clay. This clay is also called a nano clay. By the way, what is there inside the inside a ball? Can anybody tell me what is there inside a ball? Is it hollow or what is there inside? See, when you take a ball, you press it, right? Hollow, is a, a hollow fine. It is hollow. Something is there, something is filled inside. So it's compressed air. Generally, you feel compressed air inside, okay? So it's a high pressure air is there. That's the reason. Why it bounces, right? So inside every ball, it is not vacuum. If it is vacuum, then what will happen? It will, it will squeeze because outside there is atmospheric pressure, and inside there is no pressure. So generally, the ball will not survive if it is vacuum. Okay. So inside the ball, you know, you generally put a little a pressure which is a little higher than the atmospheric pressure. So you have a compressed air that is there inside. Now, say suppose if you put a butyl rubber, you know that oxygen, nitrogen, which is the main composition of air, they will always diffuse out through this molecule that is called the butyl rubber. But if you put a nano clay inside, what happens? You know, this clay restricts this oxygen, nitrogen to come out. And that's the reason why on the ball, you can see it is written DC. What DC means, this is called the double core. Right? So when you purchase a ball with DC, that is going to last longer. That is going to last six games of heavy serving. Why? Because, you know, if you are serving with this, it is going to lose air through this, you know, channels between the butyl rubber. Whereas the double core with this clay that is put inside, it is going to stop the air to come out. So it will last longer. So this is an ordinary tennis ball. This is a double core tennis ball and this double core tennis ball, you know, has the nano clay nano composites that are there inside. So in sports also, you will find like, you know, a lot of nanotechnology that is used uh, in order to really, really improve the performance of the devices. Anybody has idea like, you know, what are these things? Any idea? What are these things? Beetles. Ha, these are all insects, right? Different types of insects. Any idea what, what exactly is their source of color? Why they look so colorful? What is the source of color? How generally they generate the color? The body pigments. Is it? Is it the case that they use the pigment? They always look like this. Or they have the capacity to come off lunch. Like 
see most of the natural processes no they don't use say suppose if you have if you have uh, 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 if you have um, a kind of like you know uh, a peacock, peacock right so do the peacock has a pigment on the on their feather yes no yes yes no butterfly has a pigment on their feather no these are called the structural colors so essentially they create the optical illusions in your eyes okay so if you just you know pick up a butterfly feather and if you put under scanning electron microscope so you will find you know this this red part will have a pattern like this 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 brown part will have a pattern like this this green part will have a pattern like this okay so this green will have a pattern like this so essentially what is happening white light is incident on this so i just show you the the philosophy or uh, the science behind this here is that you have a surface which is a micro pattern or a pattern with micro nano patterns that is decorated on the surface you are shining white light into it where you have all the different types of lights and then the surface is such that it is reflecting back either the brown red or green so this is the science that is used by all these insects in order to really generate this many types of colors these are called the the structural colors you can look at this article that is given at the bottom right how exactly you know the 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 animal kingdom uses these colors in order to really in order to it uses the nano technology in order to really you know emit these colors say for example the peacock you know i have given more examples how exactly the peacock feather is is threaded in you know if you just you know pick up a peacock feather like this so you will find you know this type of structures typically like you know it is a 60 micron 60 micrometer by 5 mic micrometer rectangle and then there is a coating this is a polymer this is a foam inside okay and then you have keratins that is outside so the diameter the cross section looks like that and on top of that you have got patterns decorated like that so you have a structure base structure and then the pattern right and that structural color structures you know once the white light is shown there is no pigment it's is basically a polymer hardcore polymer keratin is also a polymer this foam is also a polymer and on top of that when you shine light you know it just reflects different types of colors not only it just reflects colors it's also super hydrophobic you can see the contact angle is very high so that means you know it's just not only colorful but also if you put water on top of that it is non wettable surface so in some places you have close knit bulbs in some places you have loose knit bulbs then brown coating on the stem then and you know loose knit bulbs then white stem okay and then bulbs will have barbules so in that process you develop a real hierarchical structure and those hierarchical structures are you know giving you a camouflage which is very similar to the leaves or very very similar to uh, uh, the trees so that you know it can hide easily during the night time it doesn't have problem during the day time in terms of like you know getting killed by the predators but it has a problem during the night time when it is sleeping so it can create nice camouflage in absence of light during the night time so this is again you know height of micro nano technology that is used in the form of like you know this is called the micro photonics or nano photonics right earlier we were talking about plasmons that is called plasmonics right microfluidics we talked here day before yesterday correct so today you we talked about plasmonics and this is called the photonics so in photonics you know a lot of applications any application that you can think about from here any application you can think about from here say so, so suppose you have soaps where you know if you can put polymer particles which has this type of structural colors so you really need not put a dye in order to really emit the light how dye works you know it absorbs light there is an excitation and once the excitation you know when they come back to the ground state they emit the light right so it's a spectroscopic color whereas here it is like like you know the light reflection 
It is not absorption. It is the reflection that is leading to the emission. The rest of the lights are getting absorbed into 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 the system, whereas only you know one of the lights are getting emitted. So these are called the structural colors. The most intelligent guy in this regard is this guy, which is called the which we call the what is the name of this guy? Anybody remembers? Chameleon. Yes, it's chameleon. Right? There is a very beautiful uh, play by George Bernard Shaw. The name of the play is chameleon, right? You know, chameleon means who changes color very frequently. So this guy has a exceptional, you know, you, you can see like, you know, different types of uh, uh, colors it can generate. Now it can generate color. Why? Because you see that, you know, this is this is the layer. This is the layer where it, they, it has melanin granules. OK, melanin generally leads to black color. This is the layer three. And layer two, these melanins are very closely knit, whereas in layer three, the melanins are like that. Whereas in the layer one, you know, it has an arrangement like that. Correct. So you have a three layer system of melanin like this. And what it can do, it can really, it can really change the thickness. It can really change the thickness of this layer, especially the thickness of this is this this third and second layer. Right, so suppose a white light is forming on top of this. So by changing the thickness, what it can do from this white light, it can emit blue and from there, you know, it can emit green. So when the blue, blue is coming, it is mixing with yellow to form the green. So what it can do, it can really compress and it can really really expand you know generally you will see with the air uh, breathing in and breathing out you know what they will do they will change the they will change the you know they, they will breathe in and breathe out to change this you know thickness of the layers okay so and then you know absorbing a white light you know it is going to emit you know different types of colors just by changing you know the gap between you know these melanin molecules in this layer three Right. And in that process, like, you know, the chameleon is able to really create different types of structural colors. And then, you know, from outside, you see, you know, red, green, blue, different types of colors are created and it just keeps confusing people uh, with different types of, you know, coloration. Right. So. Uh, 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 so, so, so these are, are typical examples of the structural colors. So this is. Uh, this is the way, like, you know, they compress and this is an example expanded one so here it is green and you know this is the compressed one where you know it is generating a kind of image the color okay okay the other simple examples of microfluidics is the entire blood vessel system can anybody tell me what is the typical diameter of your blood capillary so essentially an artery goes to like you know sub arteries and then you know Finally, like you know, it goes to capillary, then capillary becomes subveins, then vein, and it comes back to heart, right? So from heart, you know, arteries are created, the arteries become slowly to capillary, and then from capillary, the veins are created, and it comes back to heart, right? Now, any anybody has any idea what are the typical diameters of these blood capillaries? You can see some of the blood capillaries here. So if this is the uh, uh, this is the uh, this is the eyeball of a human being. So what can be the diameter of this capillaries? Sir, about 10 micron. If it is about 10 micron, what is the diameter of your uh, red blood corpuscle? It has to pass through, right? Yes, sir. So how much is the diameter? So minimum 10 to 15. You know, we had been the first slide, right? I've already shown you what is the diameter of your RBC, right? What is the typical RBC size? See, it's 7 micron, right? Now, if you have a 7 micron diameter, then it has to pass through the blood vessels. Typically, like, you know, these blood capillaries are typically they are about 20 to 30, 20 to 50 micrometer. So these are microfluidic channels. Anybody has any idea what is the more finest lubrication lubricant available in the world? Sir, if I, if, uh, tears. Why is that so? Because uh, it makes uh, our eyes wet. Yes. 
so if you just put some water into your eyes you will find that uh, you will find that your tear field will be replaced by water right and then you will suddenly find you know uneasiness you can do that experiment today in the night just put some water in your eyes and you will suddenly see that this easiness of blinking is gone okay it will become a little bit like you know for up to the point that tear film again is not secreted from your lacrimal glands you will find that this you know uh, entire eye will be a little bit you know friction prone you know you will have a burning sensation because of the friction right any idea what is the thickness of this tear film just on top of your cornea and your lens what is the thickness of this tear film any guess it is here right any guess what is the thickness kuch to bata baba aap log aise chup chap kyun baithe rehte ho sir it's just a layer uh, covering the eye sir ha huh, it's a film thin film so what is the thickness of this thin film So typically, it is about 10 to 100 nanometer. Okay. So again, this is another example of nanotechnology. Correct. Now, uh, just shifting the gear a little bit from the technological perspective. Say, suppose if you have RBCs that is flowing in a microfluidic channel. So the RBCs, you you know that this is 10 micron. So this diameter needs needs to be about 100 micron. Okay. Am I audible to all of you? it is showing a bad quality network yes sir you are audible i hope i am audible to all right yeah just let me know you know drop me an email if it is not there or just you know turn on your microphone if there is a problem <clears throat> anyways so say suppose if you are putting a blood into a channel so you can see this is a channel like you know say a single channel bifurcated into two then two into four this is a typical you know uh, a kind of hierarchical channel why it is done so because at the end you know if this blood serum is divided into multiple components you can integrate multiple sensors correct by the way you have to submit this uh, 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 this this assignment right today on this butter and ghee so all of you submit that huh? so this is a typical example you know this actually gives me the hint what what is this anybody has any idea what is this what is this called last class we discussed about this you know when you have say suppose these are water droplets in oil so what is this called and when it is you have oil droplets in water what is this called emulsion these, these are called micro emulsions right so these are all micro droplets if they are oil droplets in water that is called oil in water and if it is water in oil uh water droplets in oil that is called water in oil right yes uh this i have already talked about this i have already talked about this i have already talked about toxicology i have already talked about okay one of the major uh, uh area that is developing that is called the organic semiconductors right any have anybody has any example what is a semiconductor first what is a semiconductor i need one example from you so it is kind of a element which can be uh, which can be turned from non non conducting to conducting after passing a certain threshold see your definition definition has to be very clear right so say suppose you have you have a material okay where where you know there is no band gap that means you have a highest occupied molecular orbital and lowest unoccupied molecular orbital and the gap between them is zero electron volt what is that material is called 
conductor. This material is called insulator. <laughs> no, this material is called a conductor. There is no gap. Homo lumo are same, right? For a conductor, homo and lumo are same. Okay. Now, if you have another material where the gap between the bands are extremely high. Okay, so this is say suppose the homo and say suppose this is the lumo and suppose this band gap is about six electron volt. So you need a lot of energy like say suppose ultraviolet energy in order to make the, the transition possible and this type of material is called anybody? Insulator. This insulator. is called the ins insulator, right? So now I'm asking, what is a semiconductor? When the band gap between homo and lumo is not too high and not too low. Not too low. That's, so that is an intermediate band gap. See, typically like, you know, two to three electron volt, right? So that is what is called <laughs> a semiconductor. Any example of a semiconductor? Like silicon and germanium. Silicon, germanium. Yes, silicon, germanium, right? Say dope silicon, p type silicon, right? Gall gallium nitride, right? So these are different types of, there, will, there are a host of semiconductor materials, which are the other metal or bimetals, okay? Non metals, metal, non metal, bimetals, okay? So different types of materials you find which are which are which are which are semiconductors in the form of like you know say suppose silicon suppose say germanium right now i am i am utilizing the term organic so what do i mean by organic semiconductor the carbon will be one of the ingredient in the right but it should be a, an organic compound Correct. An organic compound yes. that is showing the semiconductor properties. Typically, all the organic compounds, you know, they show the, the insulating properties. Most of the organics are the insulators. So suppose polymer, polyethylene, polystyrene, right? Now, with organic compounds, the major issue is that first to make them semiconductors and then to make them the conductor conductors so suppose the conducting polymer so suppose if you have polyacrylonitrile right pan pani okay so this is a kind of conducting polymer you will find like you know the the invention associated with the conducting polymer is having a nobel prize similarly organic semiconductors are you know, organic molecules, long chain molecules, which actually leads to properties which are very similar to, similar to like silicon, like say germanium, okay, like say suppose gallium nitride, okay. So this is one area where, you know, physics, chemistry, biology come, in, come together and you develop different types of like say suppose organic solar cells. You know, they, they use P3HT, PCBM, Okay, different types of organic materials, which are which are semiconductor in nature. Like say, suppose if you want to really have a conducting polymer, so polyacrylate, pani is one of the uh, very very big example. Polyacrylonitrile is, uh, is 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 a, is a kind of uh, is an example of. Uh, sorry, pani is polyaniline. Okay, so polyaniline is a kind of example of uh, uh, a conducting polymer. Now, how the conductivity is taking place? Any idea in an organic molecule how the how the uh, conductivity takes place? Say, suppose if you have unsaturation, okay, and you know the way the unsaturation is there, so that you know unsaturation is first you know taken to certain point of the molecule, and then the electron is getting you know converted to you know to the to the to the other places, right? Say in one molecule, because of the conjugation, the electrons are transporting. Then again, the conjugated electrons are going from one molecule to the other molecules. In that process, if the transfer of electron takes place, that leads to 
an organic molecule becoming either a semiconductor if the if the electron transport is weak and it, it becomes a conductor if the electron transport is strong and you develop typ typical properties like you know insulation you know semiconductor and conducting properties with hydrocarbons with with hydrocarbons having like you know different types of functional groups like hydroxyl cyanide and other groups right so this is one area of research where why you are using organic semiconductors because these are typically they can be found in liquid state you know they are they are more soft materials okay you can really tailor them synthesize them right whereas silicon germanium you have to really extract from the natural resources right so organic semiconductors have huge applications in terms of oled okay what is oled oled is organic light emitting diode so all flexible electronics is 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 integrated with oled organic light emitting anybody has any idea what is a light emitting diode what is the principle behind light emitting diode how does it work Like when we apply potents, uh, uh, yeah. potential, so yes. electron jumps from lower energy to higher energy orbital, and during this process, it emits light, and that's the principle of any LED. During that process, will it emit light? After absorption, it will it will relax, right? Yes. So when you um, apply power, it will it will make a transition from homo to lumo, right? Based on yes. that. Now, after that, it will relax. That means it will come come back to its ground state, correct? The moment it comes back to its ground state, what will happen? Happen? It will emit light, which is equivalent to the band gap, right? So suppose you have a red LED. That means you know it is have a band gap associated with the energy associated with red light. If you have a blue LED, that means you have a band gap that is associated with the frequency or wavelength that is associated with the blue light. If you have a green green LED, right? So essentially, what you do, you tune the band gap in such a manner. So some examples are given. So this is CUPC, okay, copper thalocyanine, okay. So here you can see that this is a whole transport material. So one I was mentioning about. Let me just show you in a in a much. Just I expand this, then it will become much easier to visualize for all of you. Different types of conjugation material. So you can see that this nitrogen has a lone pair, and then there are different types of conjugations are there, right? So a whole transport layer means you know the plus will be transporting across the molecule due to the conjugation, and this is an electron transport material, right? So here because of this conjugated molecules, what will happen? Electron will so it's a bulk molecule with multiple molecular orbitals that are sitting, but when the electron transport is taking place. Essentially, the homo and lumo, where the relaxation is taking place, that relaxation is leading to what is the is the light that you want to that you want to emit in the LED. Okay, and how is it done? See, LED and solar cell are basically the inverse concept. What is a solar cell? You are putting light in a semiconductor device, and in that semiconductor device, you are generating current. That current you are extracting as an electricity. So in the light you have the energy, which is equivalent to the band gap of the material. Now, moment you are shining light, this uh, band gap is leading to the electronic transition. Moment the electronic transition takes place, one electron hole pair that is generated, the one from which the electron is jumping to the other material, you know the one where the electron is leaving that is called a that that is becoming. A hole, while the when the where the electron is going, that is becoming a electron. This electron hole pair is called the exciter. And then through electrodes, you are separating this out. Electron is being transported to the outer circuit towards the towards the hole material, and in that process, you are generating electricity. So a solar cell is you put light and you get electricity, whereas LED is the opposite. You put electricity. Which is equivalent to the band gap, so there is a transition that is taking place. Moment the transition is taking place, it is coming back again to the relaxed state, and while it is coming back to the relaxed state, it is emitting light. 
So you can see that, you know, how is it done? So our ITO is the indium tin oxide coated electrode. On, the, on a glass substrate, you have the electrode. And on the electrode, you have got, you have got this N-type, P-type materials, and then you have got one electrode at the top. Typical architecture is like this, that you have a gate electrode, you have a high, highly doped silicon, you have an insulator on top of that, right? Then you have the metal contact, contacts, and on top of that, you have put this source drain architecture and all these things. So on this type of, you know, we are going to really study in, in much more detail while we study the lithography to really see like, you know, how these things are deposited and all. And this, this is essentially a kind of a transistor, you know, structure. This is called the OTFT, organic thin film transistor. So we are going to study in a much detailed manner, like, you know, the, 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 the transistor structures. And then from there, we will be able to really understand how the electron transport here takes place and from there, how you generate. Uh, uh, the, the properties that are associated with the electron transport, light emission. So essentially in one end, you will understand what is the typical definition of like, you know, solar panels, how they work, what is the typical definition of LED, and then, you know, how, how, how they, are, they, they, are, they, are, they, are, they are leading to, you know, different types of transistor composition. So only thing that I'm mentioning here, see, uh, in general, you are comfortable with semiconductors, which are say silicon based, germanium based, okay, uh, uh, phosphorus, I mean, um, uh, doped silicon like, like boron doped, okay, nitrogen doped, this type of, but the new concept here introduced is the macromolecules, which are organic in nature and showing the typical semiconductor properties, okay. The last example is this, you know, uh, the drug delivery system, okay. So just to tell you that, you know, say uh, people are also experimenting with artificial teeth. In these artificial teeth, this is a 3D printed teeth. And then in that, what is happening? You know, you are putting drug molecules. You are having a total device integrated in here. And what you are doing, you are putting in the teeth like this. So this is a typical like, you know, diabetic people who are generally like, you know, having shots. You, know, you don't need to have the shots. You just you know replace one of the teeth with this. So what will happen? It will keep delivering. First, it will sense what is the amount of glucose that is there in your blood, and then you know based on the fluctuation of the glucose, blood glucose in the blood, it is going to deliver the amount of you know drug that you require in order to really digest. So in that process, what happens? You know you are really able to really able to use you know, very small amount of drug in order to really, in order to really mitigate your problems associated with your diabetes. And then what is happening, like, you know, the, the damage, the side effects that are created through drug, uh, excessive usage of drug through ingestible drugs, you know, that has been reduced. Right? This is a, this is a typical lateral flow assay capillary device. Okay, can, can anybody tell me what is this? Anybody has anybody has seen this thing? What is this? Am I audible? Anybody has seen this 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 object in their life? <laughs> I think this one you have fly. Uh, this is a fly, right? You know, did you capture the fly at any point of time in your life? No. Have you captured a mosquito? Yes. Now, question is why? Why could you capture a mosquito, but why do you, why you cannot capture a fly? Fly has multiple number of eyes. Uh, it's called. So that has been across his head, covering his head. So it, it can it can have a 360 degree vision. Yes, yes, very true. But mosquito also has. Sir, uh, fly uh, is very accurate in its uh, landing or what to say, uh, flying, sir. Why, why? What is the technology? What is the science behind it? So if you look at, if you look at the eye of a fly, this is the typical, you know, compound eye of a fly. OK, if you take a FESM electron microscope image, it appears like this. 
if i further magnify it will like that so this is nothing but an area of micro lenses how many points as a, a, a human being can focus upon say when you look at somewhere how many points simultaneously you can focus upon at an instant any idea with both the eyes how many points you can focus upon simultaneously sir i think sir i think 30 sir. frames per second not frames i am asking how many points what? you can focus upon sir we uh, one, one point sir we are well, yes so with with two eyes you can really focus on a single point yes. correct but a fly you can see there are so many micro lenses that are there at that at their eyes so they can simultaneously focus on so many different planes together because you can see that these each and every eye is at a different plane and at a different arrangement so essentially their 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 neurological system is accumulating all the data associated with different planes that are present around them simultaneously that's the reason why you will find the fly landing on a surface on a very rough surface is very fast and accurate they will really not miss out landing at any place and you know because uh, uh, any movement around them, they can capture immediately. Why? Because you know they are simultaneously they are focusing on. Say, suppose in my case, you know I am unable to see what is happening in my backside, right? I am unable to see what is happening in my sides. You know, I am only able to focus on a particular point, and then there are there are multiple off-focus points that are around me. But with fly, the advantage is that they can focus simultaneously on so many different planes so that in their head there is a lot of data associated with their surroundings okay and the plane so it has a very good idea about the geometry on which it is landing and the environment that surrounds it the same is the case for a mosquito but with mosquito the only difference between a fly and a mosquito is the number of these micro lenses are much less for a mosquito the number density is per, I mean, the area is also less and the number is also less. That's why you will find mosquito will be difficult to capture, but still you can capture because they have less number of lenses and the area of the eye is less. Whereas for a fly, this is this is much more dense and much, you know, much larger. And that is the reason, you know, the fly is a smarter animal. Now, where can I utilize this particular uh, this, this particular knowledge? Any idea where can I use this this knowledge? Just improvise. All of you may improvise a little bit. Where should I use this knowledge? Aircrafts, right? Fighter jets, right? So you know these are the things where you require drones, right? So where you you can really make use of this knowledge in order to really improvise the landing, improvise the takeoff. You know, in difficult terrains, you can really make them land, right? What is the most uh, dreaded thing in your childhood in terms of going to a hospital? What is the thing that you feared most during your childhood while you go to hospital or while Injections. you go to a doctor's <laughs> injections, right? Because it because it pricks, but you don't fear a mosquito sucking. Uh, uh, the 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 blood from your uh, from your vessels, right? You know there are you know since our childhood mosquitoes are um, uh, sucking blood. Okay, so uh, they use a very interesting technology called micro needle. Okay, so they have this 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 bended. You know you observe next time when the mosquito sits on your skin, maybe on the hand. You just observe this that they have this you know this labium you know first they, they put the labium and they spray chemical on top of your skin by the way they have fantastic eyes to figure out where is the blood vessel typically you will find the mosquito will not bite you in different places of your hand or your neck they will bite at a particular place only wherever they bite they will bite there only they will not go anywhere else. 
this is something very interesting. So they know where exactly the blood vessels are. And their eyes are able to really scan through your body where exactly the blood vessels are. This is number one they do. Number two, when they identify the blood vessel, they spray a small chemical on top of the skin. And that chemical acts as a kind of like, you know, a kind of like, you know, um, uh, 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 an agent which just, you know, uh, first, you know, it, it just makes that, you know, it paralyzes the whole place. You know, it just, you know, takes all our neuronal signal out of the, out of the picture. And then they have this fascicle, you know, which they press, which is the needle through which, you know, they suck the blood out. Right. And they, they put this needle with a particular frequency. You will see that it will vibrate at a particular particular frequency. You know, this is this is called this proboscis, you know, through which, you know, they will put it. And this labium, they will keep throwing the chemical. So up to the point it is sucking out the blood from your, started sucking out the blood from your uh, blood vessel. You have absolutely no clue that it has come in. It has pricked the, uh, uh, pricked the needle and it has started sucking out the blood. Now, moment the blood is sucked out, then only, you know, your nervous system, your all the um, uh, uh, reaction systems, you know, they come to know about this, uh, uh, this, this incident and then you react. So you can understand that this can be a very interesting, you know, technology in terms of, you know, people are working of development of the micro needles, you know, just, you know, uh, emulating the mosquitoes, this proboscis, right? This particular area, what I am talking for last, you know, few slides with this, you know, uh, with this, uh, 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 this, this type of human systems, okay, this type of uh, chameleon systems, this type of like, you know, peacocks, okay, beetles, this particular area is called the biomimetics, okay, you can surf on the internet that biomimetics is a hugely a popular area, typically, you know, you know, you know, it will, it will, it will vibrate this labium at 15 hertz. Okay, before they put, you know, they put this numbing agent here, and then you know they 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 will put this vesicle, and then you know they will start sucking the blood. And you know they are not doing it for without purpose. You have to understand that they are doing for a reason. Why are they doing this? They are, they, they, they are doing it for a reason. All these mosquitoes who are sucking blood out of you, they are all female mosquitoes and they have eggs. So essentially, this is a necessity to, to grow their eggs. That's the reason why they are sucking blood out of you. Right? So, so there is a purpose, there is a reason why, why you know, these things are happening. And in general, when you are killing, you are killing a mosquito which, has, which is a female mosquito and which has which has a lot of eggs on it. That's the reason, you know, it's very important that when you kill, you have to really clean your hands and all these things because this, you know, there is a chance that, you know, those pores and all those things are there that that spills over your skin and it can create a lot of infection and all. Because typically they are coming from a very dirty place and all their, you know, mm, uh, limbs have a have, have lot of different types of infection, right? And that's the reason mosquito is such a dangerous animal in terms of spreading the different types of infections. Acha, what is this? Can anybody tell me what is this? Who likes this animal? Anybody likes this animal? And why should you like it? Any idea what is this? Have you seen this somewhere? Any one of you? House lizard. Yes. What is the speciality of it? What is the beauty of it? First of all, whether you like it or not. No, sir. You don't like it. So tomorrow, you today onwards, you know, after I finish the lecture, you will start liking it. What is the speciality of it? Is there any speciality? It can, of it? It can yeah. stick to a wall. Uh, and it very can agile. Climb. Very agile and it can climb. Can anybody tell me why how, why can it climb? What is the reason behind like you know its capacity to climb wall, hang from the wall? It can also go upside down, right? On the wall, on the roof. Why how could it do that? 
the structure of the thumb when they put it in the wall the uh, it just takes out the air from there sorry hmm. the, yeah sorry so whenever they are uh, aligning to any surface the air inside they pushed out so the outside pressure of the air let them stick to the wall no that is not correct they are using a very very smart technology which is called the pressure sensitive adhesive okay so if you focus on the on the on the pad of a common gecko these are called common gecko so this is the 1 cm picture now if i start focusing on this you will find this there there are array these are the cetal arrays and this is called the ceta this is 10 micron so this is a microscope on the on microscope you have 100 nanometer fibrilla structure so essentially the, you can you can imagine that you can imagine that that there is a there is a there is a ceta like this millions of ceta like this and then on top of that you have got you have got the fibrilla structures which are like this so this is a these these are all connected to this so this is a hierarchical structure there are millions of such that are that are that are being you know arranged in this manner on this pad so what is happening when it is approaching the wall say suppose this is the wall when this is approaching the wall so there is a van der waals interaction between the surfaces and van der waals attraction increases with reduction in the distance so when they are pressing this you know their their pad near the wall so they are having an attraction it is like a velcro you have used this in your shoes maybe in the childhood or maybe in some of the bags you know where you have a fibrilla surface and then you have another fibrilla surface coming in and you press it and they join exactly the same method is used here so when they are closing the wall there is a van der waals attraction more they are close to the wall the more is the addition right now when they want to really remove they just you know force it out it just comes out so it's a clean addition and clean separation is the smoothest addition that is taking place and smoothest you know retraction that is taking place correct the same thing happens you know for spider also i think i have the example of spider no i have removed it the same thing happens for spider you know lots of other insects like beetles like mosquito they also have this sort of fibrilla structure so all these things you know uh, you can really make use of these these this type of technologies to create a say suppose i want to create a gloves and you know shoes which are with pressure sensitive adhesives now how will it help you know it will help me in building up a kind of like you know a spider man you know who can really hang on the wall and climb and all these things right so a lot of technologies can be thought of in that direction one of the major uh, futuristic thing that is happening in the form of like you know semiconductor devices is a junction between two electrodes you know if you have some major issue of loss of energy is associated with is associated with you know the say suppose you have a cathode you have a an anode and in the middle you have a material which is which is bulk in nature that is where you know you lose out electrons so all junctions people are thinking that if that can be a single molecular junction right then what happens then this electron you can really this single molecule can really regulate the number of electrons that are coming from here and the number of electrons that are going here so this will be having the least resistance in terms of the transport electron from one chamber to the other chamber which will lead to lot of energy saving okay so this is another example you know to stay to 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 uh, consider right so with this i think you know we have lot of different types of you know uh, uh, different types of examples i have i mean tried to cover you know at least about like you know 50 examples for last you know two and a half lectures almost to give you a kind of brief idea that why this micro nanotechnologies are important and how exactly 
you know, you are going to make use of this micro nanotechnology for different types of applications that you really want to really want to uh, 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 use in the future. The first important point you have to remember that, you know, the science behind this particular uh, aspect has to be understood. I have talked about plasmonics, I have talked about phononics, okay, I have talked about uh, different types of structural uh, uh, physics, uh, structural physics associated with the structural colors, right? Then later part I have talked about adhesion, I have talked about surface tension, okay, I have talked about different other, you know, um, uh, um, uh, other 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 scientific aspects of how exactly a, a micro emulsion is created, more surface energy is generated, right? So one very important part of this micro nanotechnology is to understand the new science associated with that. And second aspect of this micro nanotechnology to understand how do you make use of those uh, new science and technology in the form of applying them, you know, for different developing different types of technologies, right? So with this, I think you know we have roughly, I mean, an idea like you know what we are dealing with for next two three months, and then time to time, as I discussed more, um, uh, more 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 uh, technical part of it. I will keep putting more examples in the experimental system, in the laboratories, in the application part, so that you know you remain, you know, acquainted with most of the developments that are happening all around us, and you know you get a kind of very, a very comprehensive idea about the subject, the width and the breadth of the subject uh, that that is related to the micro nano fabrication, micro nano fluidics. Okay, so with this today I stop. So again, once again, happy view, happy Makar Sankranti. You know, happy Pongal to all of you. You have any questions on today's lecture? Hello, sir. Yeah. Sir, actually, I have a question regarding, sir, organic semiconductors. Yeah. Sir, uh, will we consider that uh, the homo and uh, lumo gap that is uh, for the whole molecules or it is for individual atoms? Sir? Generally, homo, no, no, you know, the transport happening through a set of, see, in case of macromolecules, your molecular orbitals are already very complicated, right? It is not that straightforward like in a hydrogen atom. So your molecular uh, orbitals architecture is also very complicated in case of a macromolecule, right? So for yes. a given electron transport, what is the band gap? That is the issue here. Electron is not transporting between two molecules. You have to remember electron is transporting from one end of the molecule to the other end of the molecule, right? Because of the conjugation. Okay. Sir, uh, sir, is it happening inside the that molecule or not? Homo, homo lumo always happen between a bond, right? Yes, sir. Now around the bond, you have a lot of vibrational and ro rotational and other IR you know, energy states. Correct. So it has yes. to be it has to be for a bond that is for sure between two uh, two atoms. But then this is this this actually like you know this is a cascading effect. So suppose in benzene ring, right? You know when you get the unsaturation, is it between only one one atom or two atoms, or is it the case of all six atoms? You know they behave similarly. Then only the conjugation takes place. No. You get yes. my point. So effect is in all the all the conjugated molecules that is coming as a effect as a whole. But of course, homolumo happens always for two atoms where there is a bond and then there is an unsaturation. This unsaturation is being covered, right? This unsaturation is being transported. That's the reason. Say somebody is receiving electron. Now, moment they're receiving electron, the electron is moving here. I mean, the, the bond electron is moving here. Then because of that, the other bond electron is moving. And that's the way the electron is getting transported across the molecule. <coughs> Let me just show you once again the slide. So in this slide, if you look at, so suppose any of the molecules that you look at. So these conjugations will actually just increase the
So, so if you look at, it's visible to you, right? Now, yes, let's say this is a benzene ring, right? And then there is an electron here, yes. right? So yes, now, sir. now you know this. This is a this is a hole. How this is this is a hole transport material. How it will be a good idea. I mean, I just you know uh, give you one assignment to like you know to to really really submit that how this you know I have given different examples, right? Hole injecting material, hole transport material, hole blocking material, and electron transport material, right? So I have given four different types, right? So what you do, you submit an assignment explaining that why this is a hole injection material, why this is a hole transport material, why this is a hole blocking material, why this is an electron transport material, right? So you will you will <coughs> you will see that. These conjugations, you know, why hole? Because this nitrogen is having a lone pair here, correct? Now, in that, if I if I have if I have one electron coming somewhere, say suppose you have a proton, right? If I protonate this, so this will become plus. Now, moment this will become plus, what it can do? It can attract some electron from somewhere, right? So, in yes. that process, you will find these conjugations, what are which are pi conjugations, which are there associated with nitrogen. So there will be a cascading effect on the electron transport. OK, same here. So suppose oxygen, oxygen donate here. This goes here, that goes there. OK, then this comes there. Then again, you know, oxygen, oxygen goes out. So in that process, like, you know, moment the moment the donation takes place with the lone pair or some external activity takes place, some excitementation takes place. So suddenly you will find the electron will move around in different places or here the plus charge will move around at different places right so that's the reason if the plus char charge is moving around at different places and if you have if it has multiple conjugated structures with the movement of the plus charge then it is a whole transport material if the minus charge is moving around here then it is an electron transport material why it's a whole blocking material because moment you know it comes to here what happens you know if this material is used what will happen it will just accept all the plus and this is a hole injecting material means if it is there, then what it will do, it will create a hole in the molecule that is there. So in that process, what happens if you use different types of organic molecules, you know, they are going to really create the situations which are very similar to that you generally do in case of, say, suppose if you take a silicon, if you put boron there, so it will be a kind of, it will be a, it will become a kind of hole, right? If you boron dope in a silicon, so there will be wherever the boron is there, there is one un unsatisfied bond. If you do nitrogen with a silicon, there will be always excess electron. So those type of situations you create just by creating, mixing, you know, different materials which are macromolecules, which are which are uh, larger molecules and having conjugations in between them with a lot of lone pair sitting. So the electron, of course, homo lumo is between the C and N, right? You are looking at CNN. You are not looking at this CNC. You are looking at this CNN about your homo and loco. But how the electron is getting transported because of these three benzene rings associated with that, that's where the game lies. That's where it is becoming a kind of full transport material. See how this nitrogen and this nitrogen is coming into picture. So best is, you know, you do a assignment to prove that how this is a whole injecting material, how this is a whole transport material, how this is a whole blocking material, and how this is an electron transport material. Okay, these three. So that will clear up the whole doubt. Okay, yeah. Any other question? If not, thank you. Bye bye. See you on next Wednesday at 6 p.m. Oh, I have a small apple, sir. Yeah, super. Sir, actually, uh, because, sir, I am for last three, four days, I, am, I was suffering from fever, fever and cough and cold. I have not tested yet. So, mm -hmm. can I just get one or two more days to submit the assignment? The first assignment I have submitted, this geese. Uh, no issues. Uh, the geese. No are, issues. You submit by Sunday, okay? Okay, sir. Yeah. So, for you, it is.